Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to Lawson Connor's latest webinar on how to launch a hedge fund. I'm sitting here today with Andrew Frost, Executive Director, and Joe Woodbury, Director of Investment Management Solutions. Uh, Andrew and Joe, uh, care to kick it off and introduce yourselves for the listeners? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Alex. Good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to be joining this webinar this morning. Um, great, to, great to be involved. Um, I'm the Director of Investment Management Solutions here at Lawson Connor. And uh, Andrew, over to you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces or names on the participation list uh, and some new ones alike also. Um, Andrew Frost speaking. I'm the Executive Director of the Lawson Connor Group and lead our investment management practice which is uh, purely responsible for the launch of our fund business. Um, over the last three years, both Joe and myself have been involved with the launch of around 312 regulated businesses. Um, so I think we're very well placed to host you over the next 25, 30 minutes. Excellent, fantastic. Well, let's kick things off then. Um, I'd like to uh, perhaps start by setting the scene, Andrew, for you. Um, I'm a portfolio manager at uh, Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Um, I've been there for the last 15 years. Um, I've had um, a decent run of success, a decent track record. Um, but the time has come that I feel like it's the right time in my life to step aside and look at starting my own business, my own fund. Um, I've got uh, one colleague, one analyst who would potentially look to join me. And I've got potential seed investment lined up from uh, high net worth family office that I'm in good contact with um, and I'm interested in setting up my own fund so I'd really like to hear from you about some of the options that are available for me at this time. Thanks Joe. Um, the good news is you're, you're not alone. Um, it's a very a similar environment to what we've seen over the past 12 to 18 months with many people taking that step to leap out of a, a larger institution and launch their own fund. I suppose if we look very high level at the options available to you, there's essentially two forks in the road. One avenue to achieve your goal of launching a fund is to get directly authorised with the FCA. Now that involves filling out an application form to become an investment manager and sending it off to the FCA. Fairly straightforward process at a high level. Now, it does take time. We're probably seeing in our experience currently around six to nine months is a fairly good bell curve of how long that process takes. And it can be quite expensive, not so much purely on the application costs, but everything else that comes with putting your firm in a position to be approved as an investment manager, hiring fit and proper people in the various compliance functions um, that require to be in place, and building up a compliance framework and an operational infrastructure to allow you to be approved by the FCA. Option number two, which we'll focus on a little bit throughout this webinar, is providing a hosted solution or operating underneath a regulatory hosting or a regulatory umbrella arrangement. Now, in contrast to you getting directly authorised, there are a couple of advantages in doing so. One is the speed to market in which you can get up and running and start managing a fund. We're Roughly around three to five weeks is how long this process takes. You'll have a robust compliance monitoring plan and an ex experienced team in place providing policies and procedure. And it's considerably lower cost um, than going and getting directly authorised. Okay, fantastic. Andrew, what's really jumped out um, at me there when you were just speaking was the elements around time to market advantage. Um, and the cost savings which this second hosted option um, would likely bring. That, that would be really important for me um, if and when I do decide to step aside. Um, how does this route actually work uh, practically? Now, that there are a number of factors at play when you operate underneath someone else's principal license. What will be important for me to highlight is essentially what that firm provides you and your business. Operating underneath a principal firm, you'll find that they will provide you with an ongoing compliance supervision and the risk monitoring process around your firm, let's call it XYZ Capital, 
and the relevant individuals that operate in a controlled function capacity. Now I'll touch on a controlled function capacity in a moment. Many of you on the call may be CF functions with the FCA currently or have been in the past, so you may be familiar. Under, underneath a hosted solution also is the investment management requirements under AIFMD when we are looking at running a fund. So that principal firm will take on the portfolio and the risk management responsibilities and oversight of your fund. They will also handle the particular regulatory reporting requirements that the FCA require to be submitted by their Gabriel system. A big part of what that firm will also provide you is the compliance framework for you and your business to run a hedge fund. Things like a compliance manual, your policies and procedures that are relevant to your activities and develop a robust compliance monitoring plan to, to oversee. We'll also ensure that there's a training and development program in place so that your staff remain fit and proper and continually adequately trained. That sounds great, um, but what, what I'm not sure about, Andrew, is whether this is um, just going to be like a mirror of what I've done before. That the whole point of me stepping aside and setting something up my own is that I want autonomy and I want to run my own firm independently. I don't want to work for another firm. Correct. And a big theme that we've seen in the market with portfolio managers coming out of larger institutions and established firms to set up their own businesses is a little bit around that. Um, they're sick and tired of working in a, a very constrained compliance environment. Um, some of the investment banks at the moment, we speak to traders weeks every week that they're spending two of their five days in the office uh, sitting in front of risk committees and compliance panels um, and they're leaving 400 basis points of performance because they're unable to trade their investment strategy in a way that's uh, compliant on uh, a larger firm standards. Importantly, with the option that we've discussed on a hosted solution, um, you gain full independence of your business. I'll reference XYZ Capital again. Um, that's your firm. That sits on your business cards. That's your website. That will sit um, in terms of your branding and your perception, your messaging and your identity to the outside market. Um, service providers will see you and your firm, your investors especially, who know you and have followed you in a previous life or as a portfolio manager at your previous firm, will recognize you in your firm as XYZ Capital. Okay, um, you mentioned there about investors, that's obviously a really key point um, if, I'm, if I am gonna set up on my own. Um, how is it that investors view this uh, type of approach, um, both individual investors and thinking also about larger institutional investors as I go on to raise more capital? It's a really good question. And if you don't have that question front of mind, um, then you're probably not thinking in the right frame. Raising money from when you launch a fund is absolute paramount because without putting something forward that's investable from an institutional client base, there's no point in launching your hedge fund. What we've seen through principal firm and hosted solutions is it's a fairly tried and tested route to launching a hedge fund. We have seen a number of large investors and institutional investors from an operational due diligence perspective find it paramount that there's a framework and an infrastructure established and run by an experienced team. So if you think about you and your co-PM and possibly one analyst launching a fund by yourselves, it's very difficult for you to put forward a governance framework and an established substance behind you that will warrant, I'm not saying an institution is going to allocate $100 million to you in the first six months, but you'll certainly get that meeting. You will certainly get on the radar. You're wanting to put forward a very institutional grade product with an established framework and efficient processes from day one. It's not something you wanna build into over nine, 12, 18 months. You want to be able to present as if you're an institution going in for a $2 billion mandate, um, because that's going to put you a long way ahead of the rest in the startup and emerging manager space. Great, thanks very much.
Uh, you've mentioned uh, about four to five weeks uh, in terms of runway required to set things up. Um, what do I need to be thinking about during this entire process? What are the practical steps uh, to get things off the ground? What do I need to give to you or, or um, what, how do I need to engage with you to be able to move ahead? A big part of uh, these hosted solutions is an area that I imagine close to 90 to 95% of you on the call would not be over familiar with. Um, and nor should you be. Uh, you should be concentrating on what you're good at, essentially generating alpha, creating returns and raising capital for your strategy. What I'd like to do over the next couple of minutes is simply run through the steps and what's required to go from essentially day one to week five, where you have a subscription document and bank accounts open um, and are live on the FCA register to start trading your strategy. Essentially, we're covering off these in three work streams. First and foremost, what's required is that you have a UK incorporated entity. Now that can be a limited company, it can be a limited liability partnership. The FCA is somewhat agnostic to what your management company. Now there are some important aspects for yourselves to consider um, on how you set up your corporate structure, but in terms of running a hosted solution, that is um, the first step that is required to appearing live in a hosted capacity. In most cases, that's a fairly fresh entity. So there's not trading history. There hasn't been liquidations three, five years earlier. It's essentially been incorporated in the last couple of weeks in most cases. Secondly, and probably most importantly out of these three work streams is actually identifying people within your firm and within the project of your fund launch that are going to be conducting regulated activity. Now that's not going to be everybody. That's not your graphic designer, that's not your office assistant, that's not the people that uh, provide some research or analysis for you. These people essentially pick themselves. They are the people that are trading, providing deal origination, investment thesis to you as a PM, yourselves as portfolio managers, and importantly, those individuals that are out there in the market speaking with your investors and customers. You may be familiar with the controlled function 30, or as it's commonly known, the CF30 function. It's the most common regulatory controlled function and essentially ensures that you are a fit and proper individual to be conducting that form of regulated activity, i.e. you're fit and proper to be a portfolio manager. You understand capital markets, you understand mis-selling, you understand insider dealing and other important anti-corruption and bribery elements of a regulated firm. Andrew, can I just ask a question? If I was bringing on um, a colleague uh, who's been um, out of uh, the, the industry for a couple of years, he's, he spent some time traveling, but he's looking to perhaps join me in the future. Uh, what would be the process for him going back on as, for instance, the CF30 if he was to join me? Sure, and there, there's, a, there's a fairly widespread there. Um, in that instance, Joe, we might look, or the principal firm might look at them, look at their CV, their relevant track record, and make a fairly subjective review on, is this, first, is this person fit and proper? If they've worked in a professional standing previously, it might be a case that some training modules or some increased proficiency might be needed in various elements to be comfortable at putting them forward to the FCA. That being said, if you've been a used car salesman your whole life and now you wanna run a hedge fund, Fantastic. Um, that's great news for the industry, though there's certainly going to be a level of training and competence that needs to be shown that uh, evidences that you understand what it means to manage people's money in a corporate and regulated environment. To finish off this slide, um, the third work stream there at the bottom is essentially making your business compliant. So what does that mean? That's a principal firm will provide you and your business with a compliance manual. It will develop the training and policies and procedures that need to be in place, just as you're a regulated firm. But there's also a number of elements here from a structural setup around your fund. There would need to be a new AIF notification made to the FCA. Now, importantly, it's very, uh, 
important from a time frame perspective that you're conscious that that can take up to 30 days. We've seen in the market in the past, some people getting caught out that we're ready to go, we want to launch our fund, oh, we haven't done our AFE notification, and the FCA, for no rhyme or reason, has taken the full 28, 30 days. That's 28, 30 days of you not earning a management fee on your AUM. So it can have a considerable impact. What's needed for that process, and we'll touch on the sort of fund formation side in a moment, but a fairly close to final draft of an offering memorandum, whether it be a prospectus, a private placement memorandum, a limited partnership agreement, that's put forward as your AFIM or your principal firm notifying the FCA that there's a new AFE coming to market. To finish off on that compliance framework, a lot of the things that you've naturally been involved with at your previous firm, things like completing um, PA dealing processes or AML training on that um, multiple choice questionnaire on should you receive a bribe from Tom in Q8? No. Um, a lot of that training and development is done within that one to five week period to launch your fund. Great. Thanks very much, Andrew. Uh, one of the things I've been doing increasingly over the last few months as I've been weighing this up, as well as speaking to friends and peers in the market, I've been going to a lot of these industry events. What has absolutely amazed me is the number of people um, out there, the number of different service providers, administrators, uh, depositories, prime brokers, um, MIFID 2, you name it. Um, can, can you guys plug me into everyone on the street? Who do I need to be speaking to? It's one thing that can really get you down um, when you think, I want to launch my hedge fund, and you spend the next two to three weeks slightly you know, kicking the tires and understanding of what that actually means. There is a huge array of people that can be involved for your launch. Importantly, there's only really a couple that are absolutely essential. Um, spokes to the wheel that really need to be in place in order to you succeed in launching your fund. For example, an administrator. You have a fund vehicle and they will administer your subscriptions, your redemptions, strike a nav, and provide general administration for the fund. They need to be there. A depository. Now, a depository was introduced in 2014 under AIFMD. That may or may not be relevant for you. Essentially, dependent on the scale and reach of your fund and the a AUM, 100 million euros is the threshold to operate in a large or a full scope AFM capacity, at which time a depository is required. An auditor, you will need an auditor on your fund. Um, importantly as well, for, as you build your track record, that you have an order in place that will provide that track record um, for future investors. Independent directors, another element that needs to be incorporated into your fund launch. Prime brokers, an essential part of your trading strategy for nearly all liquid trading trading strategies that we've seen launched over the past 18 months, there is an element of a prime brokerage relationship. Now, in our experience, with people launching or starting up a new fund, it would be nice to go and knock on Goldman Sachs door or Morgan Stanley or JP Morgan, but in many cases, that's just not viable. Um, so there are a number of very good quality tier two service providers out there that are willing to take you on as a smaller manager. Importantly, coming back to that principal firm's relationship, they will manage those relationships. There's ISDAs in place and they will negotiate the way in which your trading strategy can be incorporated into that execution and prime brokerage relationship. Lawyers, they will be responsible for the structural setup of your fund. They will form the investment vehicle and they will provide corporate and tax advice on how you set this up. A shareholder arrangement, a limited liability partnership, a limited company. These are all the things that are very important to be considering day one because you don't want to provide a hurdle month 18 as you're growing to a multi hundred million dollar fund. Then we start to get into a little bit of what I'd like to call the nice to haves, the 
don't really need this day one, but if I had working capital and maybe an investor backing the working capital elements of my business, I might look to employ a placement agent or someone that I can um, pay on retainer to go and raise capital for me. Things like IT outsourcing, um, going and getting the best OMS and PMS systems. Um, Bloomberg, office space is another great example of do you need to have your permanent eight person desk in a marble office in Mayfair or should you consider doing some co-working or we work type arrangements? These are the considerations that you need to think from a service provider perspective. Great. Thanks very much, Andrew. Thanks very much for um, all of the information. Plenty for me to be getting on with and, and thinking about. And um, thanks everyone for uh, those listening as well. Yeah, th thank you, Andrew and Joe. I think really very informative and relevant discussions. I'd like to thank everyone who listened in today on the webinar. Um, if you have any questions or follow-up, uh, want to schedule any follow-up meetings, uh, please see the contact details on the slide now and feel free to reach out. We really look forward to collaborating with all of you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.